in the Lower Borough Indian Reservation. There's a lot of nature around us here. There's a lot of historical places around too that they're still um, preserving. When we were in the Earth Lodge, all I was thinking is how many people have slept here? How many people have cried here? How many people have, you know, smiled here? Like, as we were going to the hill where we could see both sides of the Missouri River, I was also thinking the same thing. How many people have sang their sacred songs, like, exactly where I'm standing? If the hills could talk, they would always be, like, telling about what they've seen, what they've heard. Not everybody knows the history of what happened to our people and it's really hard to find it in some places it is written down but it's not exact and but it would never be taught in a school system a history book never tells the complete story which is something that i learned that to not always think oh this is where the story ends because it really never does end it just keeps on going and it's also important for our people to learn the history too so that way they know who they are, where they came from, and what has been done. It's really important that people, once they know that, from there they kind of figure out where they're going next. To move on, you have to know what happened. If you understand what a reservation is, reservations were created as prisons and so those of us who were born on reservations were actually born into captivity and we know more about being incarcerated than we do about being free we're a space and place based people with no space and no place in our own homelands this is that place that we could belong the work that we do here is to strengthen who we are as a people and our identities and our people are inundated with modern day hurts, modern day traumas and even historical hurts and historical traumas. But one thing that we do here at Legacy is we have eons and eons of wellness of health and of healing that we can tap into when we're addressing these contemporary issues. For me personally, I don't really have like, I mean, I have culture, but my family doesn't have like these certain traditions that we follow. And I just love how they have their own traditions and still keep in touch with those traditions. Maybe they're a little bit more modernized. Their center, their group is located in a mall. That way they can reach the youth there. They have the group where all the youth can just come and talk about their problems with the talking circle and just be involved and try to fill a hole that some of the kids may be missing in their lives. That way they won't fill it with the addiction or the gangs or anything else. I think there's a lot of similarities between Little Village, which is my community, and um, Lower Burl. We see how a lot of youth are still like kind of lost. So that makes me really sad, but there's something that definitely we have like in community and we can relate. When I was in high school, I had a chance to visit an indigenous reservation to visit the Lakota people. And I went during a very dark time in my life. And I discovered that was for me my, my journey to beginning healing and understand some of the trauma that I had experienced in my neighborhood. And we wanted to give that opportunity to other young people because we have a lot to learn from indigenous people, particularly how they resisted through peacemaking and nonviolence in this country. Our youth tend to be closed. Our culture as black and brown people sometimes in the city of Chicago is what happens in the home stays in the home. They were listening to people share about facts of their lives that were sad and 
things that maybe they weren't proud of. And it opened up some of our youth to ask questions, to cry, to begin some healing for themselves. I see a sense of wonder. I see this sense of what if. I see a sense of why not that has emerged. Just this vast possibility, this vast capability to grow, to lead, to learn, to change. I started working with uh, younger people because there was a need for spiritual guidance, I guess. Understanding each other is, is the, the key, I think, for, for human beings to get along. Understanding each other's history. If you don't understand each other's history, their culture, their way of life, then it's hard to understand them. I think of those things as I'm trying to teach what was shared with me. And hopefully they don't take it as they have to believe that way. I hope that they search their own roots, their own stories, their own tellings, and, and just long for that and understand where they came from. It's important to better uh, yourself, you know, with that understanding. Sometimes youth are, are just don't know anything. They think they know everything, but they don't know nothing. And when we hand them something like oral history, it just opens their mind. The Lakota people, they use song a lot. The drum to me is a very strong instrument. You can feel it like in your heart and in your body and you can really feel the emotion going out. And the singing with the drumming is very, it's a very like emotional thing. So our history has been through song. How we came to be here, how the grandfathers, if you will, come to us, they sing. It sounds like us to singing. And for them, it's the, that's how they speak. The stories that we were told go back before this planet was even a planet. The journey song. I come from a star. I come from a certain star called Tiata. Tiata means home in the Lakota language. From this star, I came in a hoop. In this hoop, we grew up. In this hoop, we sent our voice back. In this hoop, we search for life. In this hoop, we find potential. When you hear them, it might click. It might make a person uh, understand a little, a little more about this way of life, I guess. We chuck be a dawa kawahielo. We chose I Am Legacy, our indigenous American legacy, because there, there's a conscientious effort to exclude us. And when America wants to have certain outcomes, they give you certain names first. And so all these beautiful cultures from Alaska to Brazil were collapsed under the fictitious term Indian. And it nullified the beauty that each culture had. Uh, for eons. And there's no such thing as Indian until that time. And the reason why we chose indigenous American legacy 
It's, it's time for us to start telling our story. And it's time for us to find our collective voices and promote our own humanity. We were dancing with the community. I felt a lot of like people coming together, a lot of unity. You could feel that. We don't get to like um, exchange cultures like that very often. So it was very nice just to be with them and during that moment, if it was just for a little while. Delivering the care packages, for me it felt like a moment where I could help help the community out in the reservation because learning all about the struggles and hardships they go through, it feels good to do at least a little bit, even if it's not much, just to help in general. Growing up on the reservation is real tough. There's a lot of people on reservations, not just here, but all over. And not just even on reservations, you know, just anywhere that people are less than fortunate. They don't have those things. And for the youth to be able to get that stuff together, it was an honor for me to be able to let them know where it came from. Because I delivered it to a family that they just lost a relative, you know, very young too. And it has a lot of kids in the house. And she was overwhelmed with it all. She was, she was happy. Kept saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Being a peacemaker is it's a good thing. Showing that compassion and accountability and doing new things, new energies, and being respectful while doing it, so it's really important. And having that um, humility, honesty. Like you guys are doing good things and if I could help, good things will happen and maybe that could spread on because it's like a water effect. Good energy, it's important. We have a responsibility to be the caretaker. Um, when we say mitakuye oyasin, that could mean just us little circle right here. But when we make a statement, when we say wama kashka makase tomani mitakuye oyasin, so when we say that, we're saying that we're gonna make it a point. We're gonna commit, if you will to making everything from the creepy crawlers to the winged to the four-legged to the man, everything in the entire universe, our relative. If you really want to be a relative to everything, then you have to be willing to make changes within yourself. You have to be able to accept somebody else's, uh, the way they are, their, the way they believe, the way, the color they are, you know? You have to be able to accept that. I think everybody should know about compassion, you know, even if it can hurt you, it's important to, you know, show somebody else compassion because you don't know what that person is going through either. My grandpa instilled a lot of the values amongst us full soldiers and the four values that we have is respect, responsibility, accountability, and compassion. It's hard to be compassionate to racist people. It's hard to be compassionate to them, but it can be done. It's hard to be respectful, especially when you have different views. It's hard to be accountable, especially if you've messed up pretty bad with the law or whatever it is, to stand up and say, hey, you know what, I messed up. What can we do to make this right? And responsibility, it's hard because life is hard. You know, it's just, it's hard to be responsible whenever life is just giving you the, the bad end of the stick. <laughs> My life is bad, so I, I deserve to not be responsible. You know, it's really hard to have those four values, but it's also really simple. And it's all comes down to being proud of myself and because of the ways that I've, I've learned. It's just proud, you know, nobody can shake my, my proudness of myself. Nobody can make me do what I don't wanna do. 
We have many times heard in our community, if somebody hits you, hit them back. Don't be a punk, don't be weak. Stand up for yourself, fight. Here we learn the story of a group of people who rescued white women and children who had been taken captive by another Native American tribe. And the Lakota people, the men, the full soldiers who rescued them were called fools for doing that. They were never given a thank you by anyone. They were even prosecuted by the U.S. government for saving these women. Now, if we can take this story back and we can tell people they didn't do it for the glory, they didn't get paid, they didn't get any money, we have to embody that sense of rightness, that sense of justice, that sense of a bigger purpose in life so that our world can be a better place. And it begins with us, each and every one of us is doing that in our own immediate circle. Even though we're descendants from the full soldiers, that doesn't mean that we're full soldiers automatically. We still had to earn uh, the full soldier name. I was in seventh grade when I became a full soldier. I tried to enter a storytelling competition and the guy, what he told me was no middle schoolers can be in the competition because they need more life experience. So me being me, I wrote an essay pretty much telling them why he was wrong about that statement. And uh, well, needless to say, they accepted me. And when I showed up to the convention center, my grandpa was there. He was standing there with a hat and a feather. Hey, grandson, he said, how, how was your day? I said, um, it's going good. It's, why are you here? <laughs> he said, well, I heard about what you did. He said, and today you become a full soldier. And the reason being is because you stood up to a bully. And that's what we're all about. He said, we stand up to bullies. We stand up for what's right. The whole basis of the full soldier society is to stand up for what's right no matter what.